Uh, let's go down the line. How you doing, guys? Hey, uh, second time I'm back here. Uh, Riyad Mamidyarif. I was here uh, two weeks ago. No, longer than that. Okay. Longer? Yeah. yeah. No, two. Yeah. Three. <laughs> was it three, maybe four? All right. Yeah. So three, maybe four weeks ago, we reviewed a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal selection of movies. We reviewed Bushwick with our uh, famous uh, Batista. Yes. Yeah, Dave Batista. Dave Batista with uh, what was seemingly a one long take shot movie. Right. And then after that, it was a uh, monster project, which yet again. Oh. In a bad way. I'm narrative just... and special effects we have. Anyway, <laughs> Riyad Mamidyarev, next on the line. I don't know what my team is. Hi. Um, I don't know. I'm Violet Columbus. I am a, I guess, writer, director, Sometimes I substitute teach. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm here on this podcast. First time ever being on a podcast. Actually, internet radio. Internet radio? Yes. Isn't that just like a longer way to say podcast? I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is my directing partner, Ben Klein. Hello. Hey, I'm, nice I'm Ben Klein. I was, <laughs> I was also told this would be a podcast. So. <laughs> oh, well, welcome to the pseudo podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, um, no pressure here. Um, just want to talk about what you guys are working on currently, what films that are coming up uh, that you want to see. But uh, first, Riyadh, what are you? Um, is there anything you're working on now that you can talk about? Well, uh, I think the filmmakers here right next to us have really something to do. I'm mostly of a of a writing variety. I got the New York Film Festival coming up. You know, that's that's something to cover. I'm working uh, with the Margaret Mead Museum, so if you're ever in the area, there might be something to check out there. It's uh, October 19th to the 22nd, or that yeah. weekend thereof. I don't know. I'm very bad with dates. <laughs> but the point is, check it out. It might have some fucking really great... I don't know if we can pair on this. Just don't go uh, <laughs> too overboard like you guys play. All right, but there might be some really cool things you can check out. There's, it's mostly documentary owners, so if you're a big documentary guy, come down to the American Natural History Museum, check out some cool VR stuff. There's augmented reality. There's a whole slew of stuff. But that's what I'm doing. But I want to bring it on over to these guys. Yes. Because they got a real interesting project, I think, that they got. Oh, yes. Take. I heard it's, uh, it's Willie, a new short. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we graduated from NYU Good. last year. Uh, yeah, like a little, a little over a year ago now. 2016. 2016, May. Nice. Nice. Congrats. Nice. Thank you. Uh, and we did a thesis film there. It was called Willie. It's... Uh, it stars Alan Havey, who was in uh, Mad Men. Okay. Played Lou Avery in Mad Men. I saw also, like, 90s, 80s comedian. He's also in Curb Your Enthusiasm. I saw the photo. Well. I thought it was David Lynch, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay. That'd be a get. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be awesome. uh, Not that Alan was. Alan was a huge get. Yeah, it was really sweet to work with him. He, he's a really cool guy. Cool. Uh, and, yeah, it's about, it's about a... a Guy who has a TV show and he he plays songs for children on there. Okay, kind of like a Mister Rogers mixed with Raffi. Okay, yeah, and he uh, he thinks he's Native American, but he's not. Huh. He's just kind of obsessed with the culture. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. he he's offended. It's like it's, I don't I don't know. Should we spoil it? Like maybe not. Yeah, you can uh, see it on the internet hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, I know you guys have an Indiegogo campaign going, or is that... We had one to raise the money for the film, 
and yeah, it was, it was very successful. Thank nice. you to yeah, everyone who gave us money. Yeah. I said I would paint You're your welcome. portraits. You <laughs> haven't done it yet. We'll paint your portrait. It'll come. I yes, promise. we're very sorry for not doing any of the things we said we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the inspiration behind the movie? Um, we always wanted to make a movie that was kind of like uh, a children's singer, but he's a jackass kind of okay. thing. Uh, and then, yeah, because we'd hang out and like watch old like '90s videos of stuff we remember, like camp songs. Okay. And so we were like, "What kind of person like does this as a living?" We looked it up, and like, Rafi's amazing. He's okay. like the nicest man in the world. Yeah. So he's like, a scientist too. He's a scientist. I feel like he's won like a Nobel Prize or something. I don't know. But anyway, we were like, "Let's flip that completely." Right. Now, was Death to Smoochie an inspiration at all? In no, I have never people even seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen people. it either. <laughs> it comes up a lot. So weird. You guys uh, have never seen Death to Smoochie? It's no, cool. yeah, so good. Yeah. It's yeah. Quirky. Robin Williams, yeah. Edward Norton. Yeah. But yeah, the other big uh, inspiration was Johnny Cash. We found out that Johnny Cash had had a similar thing where he kind of thought he was a Native American. He was drinking a lot and uh, mm -hmm. he was on a lot of painkillers. He has a whole album called Bitter Tears, which with songs such as like, White Girl, uh -huh. uh, Banger Alert, Talking Leaves, track. which I guess is how he thinks Native Americans say paper and pen. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about the Native American culture do you think it has made these characters that be uh, so attracted to that? That culture and that way of thinking it's a good question uh i don't know maybe it's just sort of an easier entry point than black culture if you're going to appropriate something hmm. um, yeah I, I think there's actually like a long history of white people doing this like we were really interested in him and marlon brando yeah i was just about to say what about the Mar that was a little feather where, yeah. where the, exactly. the oscar yeah, exactly. yeah. and exactly. it's kind of this exactly. weird thing where it's like yeah you're you're bringing attention to something that deserves attention, but it's kind of like a white dude thing to be, be like, it's mine. Yeah, and like, yeah. Wait, you introduced that book to me as well that Marlon Brando wrote? Yeah, right? it's an amazing book. Yeah, it's like more of like a novella uh, than it is anything. No, no, it's, it's, an it's a book of interviews. Right. Yeah, Brando was living in Tahiti at the time, and he wasn't taking interviews, but he agreed to this one on the condition that they only talk about the plight of the American Indian. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this Playboy writer, uh, R.I.P. Hef, oh, uh, <laughs> he, would, he flew out to Tahiti and he spent 10 days on the island with Brando. It's an amazing book. Yeah, first half is just like the interview and the conversation. Second half is like how he feels about, hmm. like prose about like the whole experience. Yeah. Wow, I need to check that it's out. It's really good. Super good, yeah. Sounds good. So other than Willie, are you guys, you guys hanging out in the pi pipeline? Yeah, we're uh, we're working on our first feature film now. Nice. Uh, it's a documentary uh, about Christine Choi, who was a teacher of ours at NYU. Okay. Uh, she's a legendary documentarian. Uh, she's made over a hundred films, Academy Award nominated. Uh, All so social justice related. Yeah, most of them are social justice related, mm -hmm. uh, and she was just was just a big inspiration to us. We met in her class actually. Cool. Uh, what was the class? Documentary. Oh, documentary. Yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. It was like yeah. making short, <laughs> it was making short yeah. documentaries, and we ended up doing our project together in that class, and then we took every single class. Oh, oh we did. <laughs> Sweeties. Uh, it's and, awesome. Yeah, so it's like our film is about her life and career, but specifically focused on. It was these students who had protested in Tiananmen Square. Okay. And then they fled to America hmm. and. Like, well, China's they're a big banking country, so yeah. let's probably not make this. Mm -hmm. So it sat in storage for 30 years, never was. <laughs> Gorgeous. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. Really trailer boy. So yeah, exactly. yeah. Really yeah. yeah we lucked out. Like, Christine uh, Ang Lee was actually the guy who paid to digitize the footage. He and uh, she came to us saying, maybe we can do something with this. Mm -hmm. And then we had the idea to kind of make it a movie about her whole life and career, but focused on this one movie. So it's a documentary about a documentary. Uh, about, yeah, a document about a documentary. Oh, <laughs> it's a third of it. Okay. It's all, yeah. it's, it's it's all, all of those things. things. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we're in a time, like, you know, there's so many documentaries being made now. Yeah. It's like hip. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's this thing of like, how do we differentiate ourselves from like all of that and okay. tell our story in a different and like new way. Okay. And so we're probably going to use like a lot of 
different sort of form. Like we, we shoot on 16. We have 16 millimeter 1989 footage. Okay. We have digital footage that we're also doing. We have, we're collaborating with some animators who are going to animate like portions of her life that okay. we don't have footage of. Okay. So we don't have to do like the photo thing. That's cool. Um, Shout out the Kloster brothers. Yeah. Oh. They were in, their short about Christine was actually at Sundance this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was actually just about to bring that up. There was a, Christine Choi has been a focus, um, at Sundance, right? So like, I was always wondering, yeah, well, yeah and you guys clearly like you corroborate, uh, collaborated with them to like make this like project. Well, we didn't work on that project. So this was like a two minute animation that these kids, the Kloster brothers did. They're okay. great. Uh, and Kloster, like the, Kloster, the, in the Bronx? K -L -O -S -T -E -R. Kloster, yeah. okay. Um, and they made a film called Legal Smuggling with Christine Choi. Yeah. Uh, about her smuggling cigarettes from airports in Canada. <laughs> yeah, basically she like oh. she's a big smoker, uh, yeah. so she buys cartons. Nice. But she figured out it'd be cheaper to buy a carton in an airport right. and to fly to Toronto for an hour hmm. than to just buy her cigarettes in New York. Smart. That's yeah. That's smart. Um, so that, it's a hassle. Violet, I'm gonna <laughs> ask you something. Um, I know that you are actually the daughter. Of, you're, some, you're Hollywood royalty, in my opinion. You yeah, are, 90s Hollywood royalty. Yeah, well, hey, that's when I was growing up. <laughs> um, your dad is a, a director, Chris Columbus. Yes, that is my father. I had a very awesome childhood. He's the biggest inspiration to me, and I love him so much. Um, and it was, he really, it was, sorry, I just wasn't expecting it. I'm sorry. I no, totally, <laughs> no, I'm totally fine to talk about it. Okay. I just wasn't expecting it. No, it, oh. it's, it's great. I just, I'm sorry. Um, no, but he's fantastic and inspired me so much and is was the best father while also being one of the best like everyone says he's the best boss they've ever had mm, okay. he's i don't know it's just, it was he's a really good guy to grow up with it would, you can ask me any questions if you yeah want. yeah well i mean do any of his films did, did they resonate with you watch it because you're you probably were just born when he was making his best movies yeah. yeah. What, what was it like i watch? mean i think his best movies are still to come oh okay oh. that's a good one. that's yeah. good yeah. that's it. good but, um, um, seeing the classics rather. Yeah, I guess. So, I mean, when you're that little, you don't really understand. It was just like my reality sort of. So, I, I mean, and then it, I kind of grew up in it. And as you get older, you kind of like realize kind of the history that you're a part of and right. stuff. Um, but my dad always put us in like all of his movies. We're always extras. Like, Are you I, and Mrs. Doubtfire? I'm not be oh I might be as like a, a as like a baby like a straight up like infant. Okay. My sister and Zelda, Robin's daughter, are jumping on the um the piano. are jumping on the couch, the couch. In, the, in the party scene and like they're in the first shot. <laughs> um, I'm a painting in Harry Potter. She's also in I Love You Beth Cooper. Go check I that out. Watch the first scene of I Love You Beth Cooper. Please do. Please it's do. Violet. A great film. You know Shout what, out! Honestly, I love you, Beth Cooper. Honestly, watch it and buy me on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> more exactly. Money. Um, but yeah, I think it also had like that's kind of my fascination with sort of children's entertainment and that stuff. I think mm -hmm. I think it did inspire Willie a little bit, where you know he he's made stuff that is so you know like all American, mm -hmm. just like classic eighties nineties movies. Yeah. And so I and I've always been like a little dark. Mm. And so I think this was sort of, I didn't think about it while doing it, but I think it definitely being raised by him mm -hmm. has a lot to do with how Willie is and like the tone of it. That's cool. Um, so growing up with her, for all of you, what filmmakers growing up with a kid inspired you? Are you getting off of me? Yeah, why not? You, you've been quiet. Because uh, <laughs> I'm letting these two talk. They're the real brains yeah. behind this all, all this stuff. Um, I don't know, man. It's hard to say. I think stand-up comedy has really been where all my brain, like mm. all my inspiration of who I am, has really molded me about who I am. Like this, mm. um, and it's hard to say who it is. There's a little bit, a little bit of like, uh, you know, you got a little bit of like Pablo Francisco. Uh, that's like a real old guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like been doing the same jokes for like 20 years. It's like so sad to see. Um, like him, uh, David Tell. He's been huge for me, you know. Like it's just like I think uh, Dave Chappelle, obviously. I think you got to kick out the late Robert Schumann. 
Oh, absolutely. Robert Shimmel yeah. has some of the best comedy I've ever seen. And uh, R.I.P., man. That guy was yeah. a huge, huge influence on, my, <laughs> on, on like my sense of humor and everything. And just like, I don't think I've ever laughed as much as I have when I watched uh, Comedy Central Presents. And it was just like all these people who I'd never imagined in, in a 30 minute segment would make me laugh so hard I would cry, <laughs> which I never, I still have never achieved. Like that was that, that was that real awakening. So a lot of them may have transitioned into becoming uh, filmmakers because I think that's what a lot of people get into stand-up comedy to do, to right. become, uh, to open up avenues and other sort of entertainment. But I think that's what it always has come down to. You get a, you know, stand-up comedy it's so much more difficult to just be in front of a, cause you're being filmed and you're in front of an audience. It's just, there's so much more on the line. I feel like, cause it's like a beat by beat by beat by beat. If you don't, if you miss that one beat, the whole thing go, it's like a train wreck. But anyway, yeah. So stand yeah it's a combination of writing and acting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it's, it's, you, it's the most difficult. Yeah. It's actually. comedy writing plus acting. Yeah. Well, I've had a quick, do you, have you ever done stand up yourself? Briefly. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. he has. Uh Oh, briefly. I see Bob video. Yarev. <laughs> Yeah, I went by um, Rob Yara for a little bit because I thought my real name was just like, there's no way anyone's going to be able to pronounce it. Coming up on stage, right? It's like a phone call I get from AT&T when my phone bill is late. I'll it's be, just going to be like, Mr. My, 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 my. Work it into your five minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a good bit. I'll be honest with you. Last night I went to that audio file you sent me of how to pronounce your name. Oh, yeah. I still can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. I don't blame you. Yeah. Don't blame you. <laughs> Mom, you know? Mama Diara. Mama Diara. Mama Diara. Zogtan Phonics. It worked for me. Yeah, yeah, Andy. It, it worked for me. Um, so, <laughs> well, what were your influences? Yeah. Um, well, growing up with my dad, he like pretty much picked what we watched, and so <laughs> which I'm super thankful for. Um, Marx Brothers, mm. huge. Hitchcock for me, huge. Watched all of the Hitchcock movies when I was in sixth grade, and like <laughs> I'm super obsessed with him. Um, be an actor for a really long time, actually. Yeah. I originally went to college for acting, quit after two weeks, transferred <laughs> to the film. Two weeks? What happened? I was like, oh, I want to tell stories. I don't want to be told what to do. It was not for me. Um, <laughs> you can I feel like I've talked a lot about no, being no, involved. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really liked, like, the classic yeah. film school kid directors, you know, like, I, I love Kubrick. And mm. Scorsese, Wes. PTA, uh, yeah, West. <laughs> yeah, and then like I got shown a lot of cool stuff. Uh, okay. I had a great teacher in high school who showed me like uh, and, mm -hmm. and brackage stuff, and okay. uh, and then yeah, meeting Christine Choi, she showed us all these great docs. Nice. I really kind of fell in love with doc again. Yeah, now, stuff you'd never see. Yeah, and she, finding out that like Todd. Phillips started in documentary also like kind of it kind of even like because we found that out what like pretty i guess when i was yeah she age, showed us a great it flipped my idea of storytelling yeah, right. i mean a lot of great a lot of great directors are starting in documentary you look at freak and he started in documentary yeah, primarily sure. like and he mm -hmm. and he's one of the, like you gain a sense of meticulousness i think that really translates well into doing fiction storytelling yeah i always kind of as a kid too like i really like to just like pick up a camera and go make something okay um, and I think in school, it's about how much work it takes to actually make a, a real film, like in pre-production and, you know, the whole process. But I like now just being a camera and shoot, try to make What would you want to shoot? Um, documentary or, or fiction, what have you? Question. Uh... I'd really like to do like the Kim Jong Un film. Mm -hmm. The Bible. Uh, oh <laughs> no, no, like the. We doc. don't know the ending yet. Wait, the, That's interview, true. the interview. The interview, but like just real. Yeah. Okay. Or or did you see the Korea where she killed Kim Jong Un's brother or something? She was wearing or a shirt like, that said LOL. LOL. That would be a fire film. I would really like to make Wait, that. Wait, what? Film. Are you talking about LOL. the woman who smeared his face? Yeah, or yeah. She, yeah. She was wearing a big shirt that says no LOL. Yeah. yeah. She was like this tiny, like. Do you remember her defense? Woman. Do you remember her defense? It was just like I didn't know what was happening. It was a game Someone, show. Yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. Um, <laughs> we'll make sure, we'll, which makes it like a great adaptation. It sounds like something like yeah. a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or whatever. <laughs> I'd, I'd really like to do like a comedy film too. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Uh, I love that movie. Um, 
And honestly, this like this project we're doing now with Christine is like a dream come true film nice. for us. Uh, yeah, every time we're in the editing room, every time we see it come together a little more, we both get like very excited. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to make a film that was shot on film. Fraud film. Mm -hmm. I thought like that'd probably be it, you know, because it's the industry is transitioning so fast. Uh, we need the old school flavor back, yeah. back in filmmaking, I think. It just doesn't feel the same. You know, mm -hmm. the, the pro like, obviously the look, we're getting pretty close now to being able to replicate the look of film and digital, mm -hmm. but the process is totally different and it yields different results. Interesting. Yeah. Like people know that they, you're just much more precious. You can't just roll all the time. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta work linear, linearly again. Right. As opposed to like, uh, that's supposed to non-linearly, I guess. No, no, no. No, with film, you have to, because it's all... No, you can sell it, yeah. Even right. back in the day, you know, they had to splice it up. Well, no, I mean, obviously, but, yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me about the document. What, what was it like compiling and doing all that research? Uh, it or was you're still in the middle of it? Yeah, we're still very much in the thick of okay. the process. We're probably about 40% of the way there. Okay. Uh, maybe. It's okay. tough to tell. We could shoot this movie for another year. We could shoot it for another five. Yeah, yeah. it's... Yeah ended but it's gonna be great yeah well so we got all this footage that it was like eight hours of footage okay uh beautiful gorgeous 16 millimeter footage but most of it's in chinese oh dear so uh <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't can you like to help them just transfer we did we got a translator we can't really uh, pay anyone though so it's like a student yeah, yeah. so the translations aren't i mean they're, they're great. very good they thank, you, charles. thank you charles <laughs> <laughs> but they're not like you know. There, there's no like. I want like the colloquialisms mm -hmm. of like yeah. verite stuff. Like, yeah. Okay. But we're we're meeting with some producers now, and we're hoping to get some more funding. So, yeah. Uh, so then we can really make this movie. We think we yeah we think it has a lot of potential. Yeah. It sounds awesome. What, what's the title? Uh, the working title as of now is Dinner with Choi. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right. Sounds good. So guys, uh, any uh, thing you want to plug? Uh, anything on the horizon you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can check me out in my writing on uh, the Nocturnal, uh, K N O C K T U R N A L dot com. Uh, my name is Riyad Mamidyar. You can find a lot of my work on there. It's uh, R I Y A D M A M M A D Y A R O B, and you can find a lot of my reviews. Mam Mam Mamidyar. That's that sounds. Yeah, that's how I sign all my emails as well. It's just Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it makes everything simple. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Violet. Hey, you okay, I'm Violet Columbus. Uh, <laughs> Instagram. Insta is four phonies. Four is a number. <laughs> four. Um, ben Klein, and my work is on benklein.biz. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at who Ben Klein. <laughs> Twitter Violet underscore Irene. Yeah, we're both on Snapchat too. You know. uh, yeah, just see us go live all the time. Yeah, yeah. hit us up. Yeah, let's hit work. My line. Hit my line. Yeah, let's nice out. I got loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we'll see you on social media. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. This Thank, you, awesome. Thank you for having, having us. Guys. Guys. Come back next time.
Hey guys, we're back with more Under the Radar. I'm Randy Unger, and right now we have our film review segment, Everybody's a Critic. And with me are two uh, fine gentlemen here. Oh, we've got Mr. Kevin Mascara. And Mr. There's nothing fine about these gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> and Mr. Dan Quenqua. How are you, gentlemen? Very good. Very good. I, I think it's accurate. We us as a It's only it feels like it's only been a few weeks or something. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. right. it's, it's only been a few weeks. <laughs> a few weeks. But we're back. We've upgraded, I say. Yes. <laughs> All this nice decorum. Yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> just, I like just for you, Dan. I like I most, of those yeah, most, yeah. most of these movies. Most of these movies. All but one really. Yeah. <laughs> so um today we're gonna be reviewing our standard three films. Um start off with a kind of a downer, but I think we could make it seem pleasant just talking about it sure <laughs> it's called uh, elizabeth blue and it's about a young woman who is charged from a hospital for schizophrenia and she's basically trying to uh, readjust to life being outside the hospital life with her boyfriend and her family um this was just a really downer real real depressing movie i mean god D kevin what do you think what? first of uh, basically, it moves a little slow. Yeah. Definitely, um, it was a little bit down, but I think it was. Mental illness yeah. is uh, something that many people suffer with. That it can be quite difficult. They even dedicated the film at the end of it to people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. So I think they were trying to go for a real truth mm -hmm. to it, um, without too many spoilers or by any means. Um, the way I just took it was, it was a slow-paced film that tried to be truthful, mm -hmm. that was really banking on its ending. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on your personal taste. If you thought that ending was good, yeah. it makes you appreciate everything. Kind of a end. twist there at the end. Though. If you don't, then <laughs> you might see it as a waste of time. I can honestly say, though a downer, I appreciate it for what it tried to do. Mm. Uh, I think given what happened at the end, there is potential for it. A rewatch, mm -hmm. if you can deal with a slower pace. Yeah. I tend uh, to be one that likes quick and fast right. action or uh, moving along that way. But honestly, listen, they try to do something truthful and honest, and I think they actually did a pretty damn good job. Okay, good. You're a fan? <laughs> what do you think? Um, I, I guess I would say that I, I, I would agree that they were definitely going for something as far as for mental health, like trying to... Uh, had an image um, mm. of uh, like a realism to uh, the issue of like schizophrenia. Yeah. Um, the ending, the, the, the twist that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I, I saw the twist from a mile away. Yeah. Yes. I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. I mean, we're not gonna, no spoilers or anything. I didn't that. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah? No. Were you paying attention? Were you doing laundry while you were watching the movie? I might have dozed off a few times. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, I was, dogs, yeah, exactly. I was focused and I was like, ah, it's gonna happen. Yeah. I know where they're going. It was dark at the end. Then it like went really dark, and I was just like, oh, "Man, I mean, I think that um, the current with mental health. Um, I mean, I could be getting a little the film. It's so it's so depressing that it kind of just makes you think, oh." The way it is, right? Like, like no, it's not. It can it can be. You know, they can. Uh, illnesses can actually become part of get back in, and it didn't. It didn't need to go that dark. Like if they were trying to a little too do, dramatic. Yeah, like it didn't <laughs> need to get that dark. You know, right. I mean, yes, it's a struggle. Yes, it can be a challenge, but they could have made it go another way. So I'm just like, I feel like it kind of loses its message by making it so dark. In that Interesting. Light. Interesting. Um, if they like, wanted okay. it down, though, would you have that much of a story? If they made it like. Happy ending, you're saying? I am happy, yet, but just maybe not as, for lack of a better phrase, crazy. But not as like illness. Then you wouldn't have a story. Though. No, no, and I, I agree. I definitely agree. Like, like seeing her for that. I was, well, I, I, I would agree. But to have that twist at the end and just be like, oh man, so she's just. Mm -hmm. oh, right, you know, like that was that to me was like it kind of loses the message of of yeah. of trying to show the reality. It wasn't that powerful. Like, exactly. Yeah. Actually, there's a better movie. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, "Touched with Fire." 
Kate, I've, I saw the I saw the trailers for it. Yeah, and it's an excellent. Looking yeah, film. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little more upbeat, and mm-hmm. it does portray the mentally ill in a better light. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say more real, maybe a little more realistic. Yeah, um, and more easier to digest for yeah. those unfamiliar with exactly. And, and it's it's a kind of thing that there's not 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 enough people talk about. Yeah, this and stigma. To, exactly. And to get more people talking about it, you need more films like that that are going to get people interested. Not like these, like super, right. like like okay, we know it's awful, you know. <laughs> it's like we don't need to see that. affected by it and wanted to yeah, show the, how the writers and the yeah you know like 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 you said the the, the how dramatic it really is God, picked a depressing yeah. Movie. yeah way to go randall <laughs> <laughs> really picked a light one for God, us on an interesting <laughs> positive note there is a connection to those guys on your desk there did right. you catch and it and mental illness no it's the movie <laughs> Um, no. the doctor, Dr. Bowman, Adele, I'm going to butcher his last name. The, uh, yeah, the doctor in the movie, he was, was he was in Batman Begins? Close. Hmm. Dark Knight. Suicide Squad. That good actor, because he was actually pretty good in his role. Yeah. Played Killer Croc. No, he didn't. Wait, yes. that was I shot it. Yeah. <laughs> totally went off into yeah. a different subject. <laughs> yes, I was like, no way. <laughs> good eye, Kevin. Good eye. Good IMDb is a powerful. <laughs> wow. That's a random one. Yeah. That's why we actually watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Killer Crocs in this. <laughs> you gotta see this. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I see the connection. <laughs> Killer Crocs really done well for himself, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hey. When, when he got a doctor's degree. Got some Once he got out of those sewers, he's fine. <laughs> that would have been a great bridge. <laughs> Is I it just it. me, or do you like your movie doctors with a British accent? Because I always think they're ten times It smarter. makes them more... No, no, of course, <laughs> of course. If you have a British accent, you're an authority. That's uh, that's a given. All right. So, what do you guys think of the girl in the movie? Her name, I believe, what is it? Anna Schaefer. She did great. Yeah. She grows on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the first fifteen minutes, I did not enjoy her. Yeah. She's kind of like a lesser known uh, Angelina Jolie. She looks remind me the look and. Yeah, Girl was, Interrupted, Angelina yeah, Jolie. Much better <laughs> movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. So, yeah, let, uh, final thoughts on this. Uh, s- not snooze fast, but it was a little uh, depressing. It, if you like a serious film um, that's going to touch on a subject matter that hasn't been spoken about a lot, mm-hmm. I think you can appreciate it. Yeah. If you're the person that likes quick, fast movies, quote-unquote movies, Let's see this. A Michael Bay fan is going to hate this movie. Standard movie. Yeah. 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 Then you'll enjoy. It. Yeah, I would. I would probably say too. Like, like, yeah. like making it so so dark at the end. Yeah, I was space. disappointed. Yeah, if it wasn't so dark at the end, I think you know. I liked what they were going. Where they, yeah. where they were going with it. Yeah. But then it kind of just went off the rails. Yeah. If You know, right. like, that's really the question. Yeah. It's like no point to it. Exactly. Sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, next up, we've got a film called Lucky, and it's about a 90 year old um, played by Harry Dean Stanton. He lives basically in, I think it's Texas. He lives in. Sure. Yeah. yeah why not? The um, <laughs> yeah. A, a house in the middle of the. Day. He has a routine. He's very. And basically, this movie shines a light on his death and where his life is going, where he wants it to go, stuff, and cope with that and just move forward. Um, films of the year so yeah. far. Dan, what, what did you think? I, I I would, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite films this year. Um, I think, you know, so, ha- you know, Harry Dean Stanton, right? So this is his last film. And... Or one of his last yeah. words, excuse me. Um, and so after watching it, the only thing I could think of was um, was David Bowie. That's sick. Album, and it came out way. Wow. And it's, you know, when David Bowie did, I was like, only David Bowie would do that. He would release an album after about mm-hmm. dying, and you know, while he's dying. Right. Um, and it was amazing um, that he was able to do that. Um, and no one's ever done that in film. Huh. And I really feel that uh, 
he, it's, it's, I mean, he, he, yeah, he was in the Navy. That's like, cool. Like, so he went, so that picture was so, real. He's a singer, you know, and he sings in it. You know, it's like, there's a lot of his life in the movie Lucky, and it's like, how often does that happen that an right. actor That's eerie. can have? His last, yeah. It's definitely eerie. It's kind of amazing and that he did that. I mean, I can't think of any other film that can even Real exactly life. where it reflects on the characters. Actually. No, well, welcome to New Sport. No. <laughs> You're a movie yeah. from your brain. Yes. What? No, remove that. Remove that. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> so far, that movie should never be mentioned ever again. No, no. Poor Gene Hackman. Right, that was a... Never again. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. He's like, I'm never doing films again. I'm done. Damn you. Damn you. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, any um, lasting thoughts on Lucky? Well, I mean, it's... For what I felt, it definitely is more of a character piece. I think the mm -hmm. story, if there was something loose there. I know you and I have kind of made this a little bit in the car ride, where it's yeah. like, I felt like the director kind of must be a... Just, look, it was yeah. all character pieces, very... Character. After... Uh, was it? Uh, Cold. Cold. No, Elizabeth Blue. Elizabeth Blue. Because I was convinced they were all just <laughs> some form of mental... Challenge. Yeah, especially I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. He's yeah. the OCD repetitive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see where he's, he's a great actor. actor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was, it was really. I thought it was wonderful. I loved him in Alien, by the way. Of course. Great movie. I just, I just, I'm, I need story then. The visual style. I think it was more in tune with uh, about behind you, but um, the Coen Brothers, the Coen Brothers, yeah. that style, okay. that um, desert, very dusty. Line beneath. It, it reminded me of you know David Lynch. I mean, David Lynch was in the film. You know, mm -hmm. It would remind me of some you know like a David Lynch. Yeah, like a star. Kind of dialogue kind of yeah. stuff. Questionable um, characters. Questionable characters. Pretty. Like, well, was that was that Frank Sinatra Jr. in, in that? Who where? at the bar in the bar? Oh, the, the guy who oh, the, who awesome. was like gonna hook up with the woman. He was like. Yeah, like his friend at the bar. Well, there was um, there was David Lynch. Yeah, and there was the other guy who was talking. Um, I, no, that was uh, I don't know his name, but it wasn't. Uh, I, forget, but, I forget his name. It wasn't related. Oh, to I know why. I know why. I know where I know him from. What? He's from DS Nine. He was the he was oh, the Sequest. He, no, 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 no. Deep Star Space. Trek. He oh, was, Space Nine. He was Star the he played the he played like the the, the, the crooner in, in in DS Nine. Yeah, he's That's a singer. True. He's a real singer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, they had like a Deep holiday Space program. Nine. I don't know. I'm you must have needed. Work. I'm a Star Trek fan. You know? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Realize he can say Deep Space. Nine. Yeah. Deep yeah. Space yeah. Nine. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Next generation, but. So, yeah, I'm next year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now that I've officially embarrassed myself. <laughs> um, it's okay, Dan. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. It's fine. No, but I liked it. I felt like he was great. I thought it was great, yeah. too. What do you guys think? Do you, would it pass? Definitely go see? It's watch? on my radar, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I would agree. I would agree. That's a radar, for yeah. sure. It's saying... a big bleep. <laughs> or blooper. I don't know. I'm, Can I'm you do a radar for me? What? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. They've gone to play. <laughs> That's a sweet raspberry. <laughs> There's only one man who would use the raspberry. Would give you the raspberry. Lone Star. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Spaceball speaks here, guys. Yeah. This is actually the 30th anniversary, by the way, this year. I, I haven't heard of any like events or and parties of the next generation. <gasps> it's not a DS9, but it's 30 years. Right, you showed me that Screen Junkies yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're fucking screen. <laughs> don't don't watch Screen Junkie. Watch this. Yes, under the radar. All the way. So, um, I think we should segue to our last. Uh, oh, do we really have to? Do that? Let's we open. have to. Do we really have to. Open do we really have to. I made you guys this? watch it, so oh my God, we're kind Randy. of in this together. Randy. <laughs> we have to. Just talking about All right, who's no, gonna no, go no, first? No, no, no. <laughs> who's gonna go first? Let's go ahead. 
Go ahead, Randy. Tell us about all right. Well, this beautiful yeah. film. I need to bring beer next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, or something stronger. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably bring gin. All right. So I would like this movie if I was drunk, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it would have made it a lot more tolerable. I would have laughed a lot, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead. Cold Moon. All right. So... The, looking back on it, was there to... even a moon in any scene <laughs> of this movie? This I just want to make sure. Was, <laughs> okay, but I never like like there was never like a shot of the moon. No, no. I was right. thinking really cold. Anyway. No, it's in Florida. <laughs> in <body>. Yeah, so <laughs> hot and sweaty every day. So the synopsis is like kind of. I'm trying to like re repeat the synopsis from what I remember seeing. Okay, it's like ridiculously convoluted and difficult to say. So I'm just going to read it off. The okay, go ahead. The inhabitants of a small Florida town know there is a killer in their when 14-year-old Margaret Larkin is found murdered in the river tied to her own bicycle. Yeah. They don't even mention the drunk guy or the, the cop or the, anyone in it remotely interesting. This movie didn't <laughs> know what it was doing. This is... let's, let's call it for what it is. In the beginning, it looks like it's a weird piece about a family right. who grows crops. Yeah. Then it's a murder. Right. Then we think we're focused. Yeah, like you think it's a detective murder yeah. mystery, right? Where yeah. the family yeah. is the focal point of it. Right. Then screw this family. <laughs> Let's focus on the murderer. Yeah. And then we're just going to crazy town where, as the description says, you could tell. Of those that was what they were banging. And this, this movie felt nothing like those. Nothing. Except for, there were two moments. There was one moment where they were like, this is another thing, but it, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. The pacing was awful. It just everything. There was, was nothing. There was. It felt like it felt like the first part of a movie for an hour and a half. Like the first thirty minutes of a movie, which dragged. <laughs> Like, they didn't build up anything. They just completely abandoned the characters. It was it was so sad. It was just so bad. It was. Oh, so well to know. How... Sir, pet peeve number one: <laughs> if you are going to be a murderer, yeah, clearly invest in something to protect your face. Right, a little brother murderer. Has well, didn't he have like a he had like a gas mask type of thing? Oh, we're getting to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pardon it was me. not a Pardon me. Because I stopped and zoomed in. Yeah. Oh. And though it's hard to fully identify what it was, it looked like some weird button type mask. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there were straps hanging around. Oh, and all that stuff. oh that's yeah. what that was? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like I thought it was like a bandana or something around just being no, like there were like it was straps and buckles. Oh, yeah, it's just some metal stuff on there. Now, but like none of that was developed at all. They weren't. No, like, no he doesn't no. have a dungeon or anything like that. Like that would have been all right. Then I would be like, oh, there's some reason for this <laughs> connection. Like, oh, it's like the guy from what, Fifty Shades. It could have been a good. It could have been like a like a Twin Peaks kind of thing where it was like the girl dies and it turns out that she has this crazy sex life and she's right. sleeping with that's the teacher. That's what I thought was gonna be like. Yeah, yeah. And then then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, I did it. I, I did it. <laughs> it was like it's like twenty minutes in. I mean, if you're gonna murder somebody, no. first off, we at the radar do not condone murder. murder. <laughs> no. If you're gonna go that I don't, far, I don't speak for them. <laughs> at least wear a better security. Mask. <laughs> That's just like insult to injury. Uh -huh. You're getting killed by a guy in some weird strap, leathery face mask. Yeah. It just ugh. So that was pet peeve number one. Oh, here we go. Okay. Check one. Check. <laughs> pet peeve number two. Yes. There are many scenes because there's a girl who does change her bicycle where you see her floating. Pedaling on a bicycle. That was the back. best. <laughs> the best seat. <laughs> now, I'm scary. We're all basically the same. I was age. like, we like, I'm looking at this. Like, this is really happening. <laughs> She's on an imaginary bicycle right now. Now, picture that scene. <laughs> yeah. Now go back to our childhood. Uh huh. Uh, Muppets. Kermit the Frog. Oh yeah, for bike. sure. Same for <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's definitely the same movement. Little legs. Right, right. They were directing that. And they were like, you know, do you like Kermit the Frog? <laughs> What? How hot are you? <laughs> so that's pet peeve one pet two. Pet peeve number yeah. two. That, that that's it. Like you can't have a horror movie with somebody in an imaginary bike like Kermit the Frog. 
just it's yeah, not. it's just funny. Well, it was nice to see Christopher Lloyd. I think that yeah. was the only thing that was good about this film. Like, oh, look, he's still alive. And a, grump, a grumpy old man in a wheelchair. Yeah, it kind of worked, I guess. role he can get now? I don't know. I guess. I don't know. We're talking about, like, the last time I saw him in a bad movie was, like, Piranha 3. <laughs> Which, why is that in your filmography? <laughs> I guess he needs the money. Uh, I don't know. It seemed okay. In the, like, he did well in the 80s. I don't know. But, yeah, maybe he had some uh, stock and some REITs, you know, that bubble <laughs> burst, and he's like, well, cold moon's calling me. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> oh, and I like that the sheriff, the sheriff was the guy from Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah, he died in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> um, Frank Whaley. Yeah. I like him. He's yeah. a good actor. He was in uh, Broken Arrow and a movie called Career Opportunities, Yeah, where he gets locked in the Target overnight. Where he plays a, like a janitor. And the other girl who, the other person stuck in there with him is um, the girl of his dreams. She's a shoplifter, I think. Okay. And basically it's them overnight in Target and they fall in love. And it's a much better movie than Cold Moon, I assure you. Targets are pretty big. I don't have to associate with somebody overnight. It's true. There's nothing's true. wrong with They're this. They're the only two yeah. people there. I'll hang out in this department. You hang out over there. We you have know? fire codes. You always have to have an egress. You can't actually be locked in a building. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, some plot holes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, was it a Target or was it like a fake Target? No, no, it was actually okay. Target. Oh wow! And, and this was in 1991, so I don't know if they okay. just came out with them and they were trying to like, promote the store. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Cool. Career opportunities. Yeah. 1991. Yeah. Yeah. And he was in a Kevin Spacey movie called Swimming with Sharks. He played the young employee. Who he was, played a detective on net, in Netflix too. I saw which Just show? Recently. One of the, the Stranger Things or no, no, one of the Marvel shows. He's in Broken Arrow too. Like oh. A nerd oh, Luke Cage. Oh, he's in that. That's it, Luke Cage. There. Yeah. I need like to a, get on my my Marvel stuff. He's okay in that. He's actually in like Luke, Luke Cage. Cage. Yeah, I heard. Um, what's the, Iron Fist, King, King of Fury. You don't even watch that one. No. Because I've seen the, the two Daredevil episodes, um, seasons. Clearly, this is all more interesting than Cold Moon. A lot. <laughs> I think we've abandoned Cold Moon. Actually, no. Final thoughts on Cold Moon. Let's just get it over with. <laughs> avoid it. Yeah. Just avoid yeah. it. Yeah. It had. I, it's just so sad. It was. It, it had so much potential. Like it could have been. Could have been kind of cool. Like especially, it was nice. Yeah. The music. I, I. The music. There is actually some music in it that I thought I was, was too pounding in it. Yeah, but it was. But I mean, it like you know, it goes along with the whole they Beetlejuice get thing. Elf. You know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know. So I mean, I, I can. I can get with it. You yeah. know, even the. You know, the not so good horror effects. Like it, it was the script. It was. Yeah. Oh, and the acting. I've got that. Grandma or the cheerleading. Uh, <laughs> And the brother, they're all the, back. Oh, oh, they were grandma all. was oversold every season. Yeah, yeah. She's just... <laughs> she's crying. It's like, God, yeah, it was chill just out. <laughs> a train wreck. Yeah, total. All through total. It. total. So my final thoughts are: don't watch it. Avoid it. Like <laughs> Avoid it don't watch it. Yeah. And hell no. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right. Definitely. So okay, have you guys uh, seen anything lately that you might recommend? That we haven't reviewed today. Kevin? I mean, I've been trying to catch up on Netflix. I just yeah. saw The Founder, finally. Oh, really? Yeah. I Mr. Keaton, it. yes. Loves his performance in that. It was a great film. Just I loved it, too. I like businessy type films where you get it. Like, it's kind of not like Wolf of Washington sense that you see how crazy it is, but you just see <laughs> aggressive, hungry people yeah. trying to get what they want at no cost. Have you seen it, Dan? The Founder? Which no, but no. the McDonald's founder. Oh yes, no. The I'm sorry. Yes, I did. This will be our that. fourth film. I did see that. I actually yeah, yeah, yeah. liked that a lot. It, it was, was actually it was pretty good. It was good. You know, it, it, you know, it, it followed the story. You know, anything with Michael Keaton. I'm yeah. a fan of. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, he played. You know, played the character great. It was um, it's a good, like good history lesson about McDonald's. Yeah, and actually, oh, John Carroll Lynch, who played one of the McDonald's brothers, the big guy. Mm -hmm. I, I interviewed him a couple days ago. Okay, he directed Lucky. He did? Yeah. Wow. He, he directed it? His first directorial film, yeah. That, lucky. Excellent. Yeah, he was good. Wasn't he like, also the weird brother in the Drew Carey show? I think he was. I think he was. He's been around a while. He's on TV, film. Is he related to David Lynch or no? I don't, I don't know. That, that would have been a good question for me to ask. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, that's why I'm here. Yeah. To provide you questions that you should have asked Thank you, Dan. the week before. Good man. Good, <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. But um, yeah, I like the founder. I thought it was a good look at the. Did the you guys watch Bad Batch? Mm. Did you ever see that? No. Oh, is that fairly new, right? Fairly new. The guy who plays Aquaman. 
Jason Momoa? No. Momoa? Um, yes. Yes, he's, he's in, in it. Um, I didn't see it, but I know. Keanu Reeves is in it. Oh. And um, Bad Batch. Jim Carrey's actually in it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but he's like a really, he's like a, he's like a hermit. It's oh. a very bizarre role for him. He hasn't had much comedy. He's, he's gone off the radar. Yeah. I don't know if you know about him. He's, he's started, he became an artist. Like a oh, has he? I didn't know that. Over the past few years, and he's, he's focusing on that. And so, is he good? <laughs> Yeah, he's actually, there's some really great stuff you should check it out online. Cool. Jim Carrey's see what he's up to right now. I, so, we I, were, I'm sure you were, we were obsessed. I know you were. Yeah, I know I, you were. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I know you were. I'm sure you were too. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Nothing. Show me, show me a rhino joke <laughs> right before, 30 minutes ago, he showed me a rhino joke about Ace Ventura. That was oh. just a picture of a, no, just a straight picture for a rhino. It's like, kids nowadays don't know how hot it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah. Yeah. It's uh the movie was uh, produced by Vice Media, okay. which I thought was kind of interesting that they're nice. Vice about. News. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So they're going in to make it a film and I thought that was kind of a bit dark. Yeah. Super dark, super gritty. What are they like? Hippies or surfers? It's kind of like a dystopian world where um instead of going to prison, they just send you to this like part of Texas that's mm. fenced in that huh. is just like just like do whatever. Escape from New York. <laughs> yeah, kind of escape New York, but like in the middle of the desert. Okay. Way. So best way to describe it. But it was. And it's uh, very dark and serious. Very dark, serious. It's like it's action. It's gritty. Okay. Just cannibalism. I mean, it's like it's a little. I don't know how I feel about JC. Just Jason Momoa. Mo- I can't pronounce it. What do you think? Momoa. Momoa. What do you think about Samoa? Just not Samoa. But switch switch the effort. Yes. What do you think of of Aquaman, the actor? Can't tell right now. Big. Know. He's a big guy. The big guy. I don't know what it's this. It depends how they write it. That, that yeah, character is cheesy to begin with. I have a bad feeling about the Justice League movie. I mean, from from watching Bad Batch, you know, he seemed okay. Yeah. You know, he does the dark, broody, big guy thing pretty well, yeah. you know. But I mean, you know, so did Arnold Schwarzenegger. But then he started talking. <laughs> you're like, oh, we're on. you know. So you just have to, right? You know, take it with a grain of salt. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So what are you guys looking forward to? Movie wise, movie wise, Blade Runner. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Come on, come on that's, yeah. that's gonna be pretty come awesome. on. That's gonna be great. Yeah, we should. We'll, maybe we can see it together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll make a day of it. Yeah, <laughs> a whole day. We'll see. A whole day. Did we see multiple times? Is that the way it's gonna work? Do you remember when we saw Cowboys <laughs> and Indian and why, Aliens? Why? Why would you spend money? Why did we see that? Movie? We saw that. Yeah, we saw that. I don't remember that. Right? Two thousand eight. Yeah, Favreau directed. Peace. Can you see what's terrible? <laughs> I thought it'd be interesting. I thought it was okay. Yeah. Was, you know. I think I fell asleep during that. <laughs> yeah. But um, what else? What else are you guys looking forward to? We've got like two minutes. <laughs> going home? <laughs> that was just blood. Uh, <laughs> going home and going yeah. to take a nap? Okay. Oh, no, I mean, that's, no, that's, a, that's a good <laughs> idea. Back to what you said. Oh, I'm excited for the Justice League. Okay. I know I'm going to spend money. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to watch it. But I also know I'm going to regret it. It's what about Star Wars too? Oh, Last Jedi, yeah. yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in 3D though. No. Yeah. yeah. Rogue Rogue wow. One Rogue One was decent in 3D, but it didn't really. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. I yeah. told, I, I've yet to yeah. see a live action movie that deserves 3D. Animated, yes. Maybe I'll pay for it. Avatar, sort of. Yeah, but I have to like the movies. I don't like getting nauseous when I go to the movies. <laughs> I don't like paying extra money to get nauseous. Then don't but... do four do four two k. Yeah. Four dx. Four dx. Where the the seats shake and they spray water in your what? face. That's yep. a thing. It's a thing. I saw it in uh, in that. I thought they did it for like Honey I Shrunk the Audience and in, <laughs> in Epcot. It's similar. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Similar. Just now it's two hours of water. Oh my face. god! It's a little yeah. It's no, hokey. thank you. It's, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> What did you see? What movie did you see? It. 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 it? Oh, okay. That yeah. would actually be terrifying, probably. Yeah. It, it <laughs> added a little bit to it. But yeah. yeah. No, overall, it didn't really add much. But, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything, anything you want to plug? Any websites or... Twitch like, under the radar. Thank every you. Every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Come on, every Sunday, man. It's the yeah. best. Thank you. I look forward to it. Oh, me too. Every week. I'm sure you do. It's great. Yeah, I, I skip church for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would skip it out regardless, but... Well, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you both. I'm going to meet after this. Yeah. All right, guys. So um, that's been our show this week. I want to thank my guests, Kevin Mascara and Dan Quenqua. Um, next Sunday, I will actually be at New York Comic Con. So I Woo! wanted to say that um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy the week. Two weeks, rather. 
and uh, I'll see you next time. I might rain on your instance under the radar. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>